Welcome to Astro Energy with Astrologer Angel Shelly Overton. Welcome to the Astro Energy Show for Tuesday, April 26th. That just seems so crazy to me. 2016. Anyway, um, we've got a wonderful show for you. We have a lot of things going on, as usual. It's going to be another busy week, but we have focused mostly on Mercury retrograde today. My name is Shelley Overton. I am an astrologer in Orlando, Florida, and I'm happy to be here to answer your questions and say hey and let you know what's going on astrologically because we've got a lot of stuff going on. Anyway, so uh, today, let's see, let's just start it off and see what the temperature's like here. It's been kind of cool in Orlando, and I've got a big old truck going by. I hope it's not too loud for you. They're doing something down the road. I don't know exactly what it is, but they've had a lot of gunite trucks, which are, um, gunite is what they spray on the side of pools to make a pool. And I'm like, wow, somebody must be really getting a big pool down there. Anyway, it's 77 degrees here in Orlando. So it's, I would say, pretty much fabulous, which I am very happy to say because there's been a lot of rain in the last few years and a lot of heat and humidity, but we've had just the most beautiful spring. I can't remember the last time we had a spring like this. It's been really, really pretty. So anyway, um, so if you would like to call in and get a reading, the number is 347-994-3365, and we have open lines today, I'm very excited to say, because I think... Having the show this early in the day kind of makes it a little more difficult for people to call in, but um, hopefully we'll have a few callers before the end of the show, and I can go over some uh, charts because I just really love uh, doing that. And I made a mistake in not getting the information out for the show until just recently. I thought I had set it up on Facebook for earlier, but I realized I hadn't done it, so it might be a little light on callers for today. Anyway, but we've got a lot to talk about in the chart, so let's get on with that. And let me just open my book to make sure I have all my dates handy if I need it. So currently in Orlando, actually, you know what? That's not even current. Let's just click on over here. It's a sunrise chart I did earlier, and we don't want a sunrise chart. We want a now chart. So currently in Orlando, Florida, there's a Cancer rising. We have Jupiter at 13 degrees Virgo retrograde, North Node 20 degrees Virgo retrograde. We have Mars at 8 degrees Sagittarius retrograde, Saturn at 15 Sagittarius retrograde, Moon at 25, can't go retrograde, uh, Pluto at 17 degrees Capricorn retrograde, Neptune 11 degrees Pisces direct, South Node 20 degrees Pisces retrograde, Uranus at 21 Aries direct, Venus at 25 Aries direct, Sun at 6 degrees Taurus doesn't go retrograde, and Mercury at 23 degrees and 23 minutes about to go retrograde on the 28th. So I'll even give you the exact time if you want. Let's just look that up. So it goes retrograde at 1.20 p.m. Eastern, 10.20 a.m., Pacific on the 28th, which is day after tomorrow. I'm so used to having a Wednesday show. It's the day after tomorrow. Okay, so uh, Jupiter is opposite Neptune, and so we're having some energy from that. Jupiter retrograde, I love that Jupiter is coming close to going direct. You don't even know. The ninth. So we're 11 days. Let me see. What is it? Six? No, not quite. 17 days away from him going. No. Is that right? Oh, my gosh, I can't do my math. 30 days has September, April, June. Okay, so it's four days to the end of the month and night. Okay, so 13 days, just a little under two weeks from today, he goes direct. Ah, oh, sigh of relief. Yay. So, yeah, Jupiter wrapping up a lot of the energy around uh, being alone, learning how to be alone, starting to appreciate being alone, or just general um, topics around 
whether or not you like yourself, around your self-worth, around your ability to be alone and be, you know, in and about yourself. Um, Looking into your health, looking into what it is you want to do for work, not necessarily career, but how can you be of service? Um, It can encompass career if you have Saturn in Virgo. Definitely uh, career issues are being triggered right now. Um, Definitely all the people, and I say this a lot, but it's such a strong hit. And it really is, for this generation, a very strong time uh, in not only the lives of people born in the early 60s, but in the sense of people who are interacting with those people, which is pretty much everybody. So there is that generation that is having Jupiter directly on the Uranus-Pluto conjunction and even some of the, just the approach to the conjunction in Virgo um, of the 19, say 1963 through 1965, that whole time when uh, Uranus and Pluto were conjoined, that is where Jupiter retrograde in Virgo is triggered. And then of course, because of the opposition to Neptune, it is also triggering that whole part of the chart. And um, so People born in that era, which would be I'm trying to remember when Obama was born. I think he was born in '61, so he was kind of at the very beginning edges of it. And then um, anyone who's younger than you know about 54, 54 to 50, those that age people are all feeling this strong energy right now. Neptune opposing all of that Virgo. If you are a Virgo again, if you have planets in Virgo, Neptune is drawing your attention to more of the ethereal side of life toward, you know, your psychic view of things and away from the logical left brain view. The North Node at 20 is also drawing our attention to the Virgo energy. North Node is where we can find our fortune, where we right now as a collective, because that's where it's at in the sky, are learning how to be workers, be of service. um, And because of the Jupiter connection, how can we expand on this energy? How can we expand on our connection to the Earth? And we just had Earth Day four days ago. So uh, it is a time of awareness and the earth and earth day energy is in the sign uh, sun sign of Taurus. So we'll get to that in a second. Oh, wow. I just had a little <laughs> rush of lightheadedness. I don't know what that was all about. Anyway, maybe I'm not breathing deeply enough. So we have Mars at eight degrees Sagittarius retrograde and he's conjunct Saturn at 15 and also conjunct the moon. So in the last couple of days, we've had this moon going through Sagittarius. Actually, I think it went in yesterday morning. And that means that our view of how we nurture and the, how we manifest the mothering nature, the the home energy in our lives is strongly connected to Sagittarius as well as the Mars Saturn retrograde in Sagittarius. So it's about moving on, uh, transitioning. It's strong energy for selling houses and real estate right now. Um, the moon connection to the home and family and the Sagittarius energy connection to uh, transience and transition and expansion and also um, doing something about your home. But that being said, the retrograde action may mean that while we want to move on, we want to go forward, the energies of the sky, the Saturn and Mars connection, are saying we have to stop and review why and where we want to go, why we want to go there, if we're done with where we've been. And again, because Mars is going retrograde into Scorpio, um, there's going to be another connection to something that has been hidden or emotional in the emotional bond that we felt to the property or the place that we were living. And um, so we're going to have to review that. And it's, I'm sorry, it's just going to be redundant on some level, but, you know, with all these planets retrograde, this is kind of a quintessential time 
of really going back over where we've been. It's like, I want to say, it's kind of like a life review. It's like a life review before we move on to the next phase. And it is a very strong shift we're going to have later on this year. And especially when Jupiter goes direct, that'll be a really strong shift because Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius. So when Jupiter finally goes back direct, it means that we are going to be expanding the realm of work and what it is we have to do and accomplish and also a volunteerism or education. Definitely Jupiter conjunct or uh, coupled with Virgo speaks to education to teachers. If you're a teacher, it's going to get really busy before the end of the year. Obviously May is going to be crazy. I know in my, uh, my day to day life, my son, uh, this week is the last week he has going to high school in his actual high school, and he's in a special program, International Baccalaureate, which um, is kind of like the next level up. Well, I think it's a couple levels up, actually. It's for gifted people, who gifted students who are working towards the next level, so it would be college and higher education like that. So they have special end of year testing and that goes on at the college level and they not the college level they go to college they go to the university to take their tests for the month of may so he gets out of high school and finishes up this friday of actual classes in high school and then they get to go um go home for the rest of the time to study to take these special tests so that is a classic example of Jupiter and Virgo, especially Jupiter and Virgo going direct, taking this finals before the end of the year. And um, let's see what else we have here. Pluto still actually in um, Virgo, I should say. Jupiter and Virgo is squaring Mars and Saturn in Sagittarius right now. Almost like splitting the difference between Mars and Saturn. So we've got this... Um, conflict actually going on and I think what really is kind of happening is some of those students who are looking to move to the next level looking to the end of the year are stressing out over taking the test but also what is going to happen in their lives like where are they going to go what's going to happen um, after this part of their lives finishes up so um, you know this these energies are happening in very profound timing with this particular graduating class, but it doesn't necessarily happen every year. So um, I'm always having conversations with my son about astrology because he's at that age when he questions everything and he's analytical and he's very logical and he just like to him um, drawing conclusions from the planets or something like that um, to say that they actually have any influence or there's some connection just doesn't resonate to him but I will tell him hey you know these things are going on look out for them oh well that's just in coordination with what normally happens this time of year you know of course I'm going to be making a major life change of course I'm going to be doing testing and that's school yes you are but right now it is much more intense with Jupiter in Virgo because Virgo is the analytical one. Virgo does rule teachers and ergo test taking because the teachers usually administer the tests. Jupiter rules higher education, rules uh, the expansion of knowledge and understanding and wisdom. And he's retrograde, which makes you worry a little bit more, want to try and understand where you're going to be going. And then after May 9th, um, a lot of people who are taking these tests are going to feel much more satisfied, much more um, capable of doing this. Not only capable, but definitely active and anxious to get moving along with the next phase. And it's kind of something that has been anticipated. And this can fall in, you know, all the areas I mentioned before. It can fall in, um, you know, with musicians. I know I've had other people call who are musicians and they're like, well, when's it going to happen? When am I going to hear more about, you know, being a musician? When can that get started? After May 9th. Um, it's also uh, travelers or anybody who has 
uh, type of job where you're traveling a lot. I know someone who uh, has Saturn in Sagittarius and travels to another city for a living. Um, that's going to be extremely busy. You know, people who travel for their jobs. I have my cousin travels for her job as well. It's going to pick up. May is going to be a very strong month for going somewhere, whether it's for personal, for business, or pleasure. Strong month of, of travel, as well as reviewing um, why you need to travel. It may be a time, especially for Saturn returns, where you're trying to understand this next phase of your life and, and how you can make your dreams happen, how you can actually make your goals and your life purpose happen. So, okay, so that being said, now we've got Pluto and Capricorn. Pluto and Capricorn, you know, I don't know how much more I can say about that. It's it's a tremendous time of upheaval and shift. Again, we have um, the energy. Pluto is intensity. It is shift and change. It is major. I mean, like, Pluto is power. Pluto is about having power. And the way it expresses, because it is a Scorpio energy, it can express through demolishing things. It completely, Pluto is not afraid to let go of something. They try to make things work to the best of their ability, to the nth degree. They will go until they have convinced themselves there is no possible way it is going to work. There is no possible way Everything has been exhausted, and when they have gone through hell and back to finally realize that it's not going to work out the way they anticipated, the way they see it and visualize it, and the Pluto energy is very good at seeing connections between things. Oh, this is happening, so this needs to be repaired, replaced, um, fixed. The solution is they, they are solution-minded people. And so, you know, they're they're always seeking for the solution. So they have a very difficult time letting go because they always believe that they can find the solution. So this is a time of letting go and really, you know, it's the end time of many different situations. And Pluto rules commitment. So... We're being asked, and in the sign of Capricorn, it's about the system, the government, the authority. So what is your level of commitment to the structure that you have assigned yourself? So that's your job, that's your marriage, that's your family, that's um, anything that takes a commitment. It's, um, you know, a friend's daughter is a ballerina. What level of commitment does she have to have for that? I mean, that's an intense level of commitment. So it's it's questioning. And in Capricorn, it's going to be about the physical structure. It's going to be about the physical system, the ability to organize it. Is it organized properly? And in the physical realm. So, yes, it does rule the earth, the earth structure, and the physical body, the skeletal structure. I can tell you every time Pluto and Capricorn goes direct or retrograde, I feel aches and pains in my bones like I have never felt before. So, um, you know, you can feel that. But definitely earth shifts and earth movement happens when Pluto retrogrades. We're still there. But as we move on, we've got Mercury going retrograde in two days. Is that going to affect us? Yes. It is a very strong, potent energy. Um since right now we are waiting for callers, I'm going to tell you the number again, 347-994-3365. Um, if you want a reading today, I am available. So um, I will end the show early if uh, we don't get any callers today, and I will do better getting callers next week, trying to make sure everybody knows what time it is. And anyway, um, so... Okay, well, let's see. Do we want to go there? I think I'm going to go to Neptune before I get to Mercury in retrograde. So Neptune, I've already said, is opposing Jupiter, but he is also sextiling the sun. The sun is approaching in Mercury, in uh, not Mercury, sorry, Taurus, to uh, sextile to Neptune. So sun in Earth and Neptune in water 
it is a time of connectedness of earth to water because you know the imagery the symbology of that connectedness with sextile it's a positive aspect it is about evaluating where we are in money neptune can rule the flow of money and our greatest desires and really kind of our inability actually to put the brakes on with spending and allowing because Neptune is the energy of breaking down structures and it is also fluid. It is about emotion. And when I don't know about you, but when I have something I desire, um, I want to go and get it right away. It is a manifesting energy because Neptune can visualize very readily exactly what they want and in positive aspect to the sun in Taurus it means that to manifest it right away your ego is connected to those desires you you see that car I mean it it is definitely about having the value having the the um, presence and status symbol not well Taurus status symbol is about showing off wealth or You know, I wanted to say, well, actually, that's Leo. I was going to liken it to Leo. Leo likes to have nice things and show them off, but they do it more, I think, because they want to belong and they want to be seen as somebody who's made it from the status symbol of um, attention, whereas Taurus likes showing off the the, um, what it took to get it. You know, like, oh, I earned that Mercedes. Look at, isn't this a nice luxurious automobile? Whereas Leo is much more ostentatious. Like, hey, I'm out here in this really hot sports car. Um, Yeah, Taurus will always go for the elegant aesthetic appeal and something that is like, oh, that's nice. So where Leo will go for the red vehicle, Uh, Taurus is more likely to go for the blue or the black, more conservative. So that energy is strong right now, but Neptune is squaring Saturn and Mars. So Neptune is feeling fewer boundaries and wanting to get us aware of water energy and the shift. Definitely there is some strong energy to the ocean and the land. So it can also mean the connection of ocean to land. So shorelines are uh, getting our attention as well. So, um, but this also culminates, so to speak. It, um, what's the word I'm trying to use here? It fleshes out the idea of uh, Earth with other planets that are going on and what's going on with Earth Day and actually the attention to the land, attention to the Earth. So, bringing in Pluto to this uh, mix with the Taurus energy, we have Mercury. So I'm not really getting, let me, uh, I'm sorry. I'm feeling a little lightheaded. I think part of it is I didn't have enough to eat. I usually have a mid-morning snack. And so I'm a little lightheaded for that. So maybe I'll take a break here and grab something real quick on the break at the end, at the bottom of the hour. But, I'm going to go back to Uranus and Venus because they're within four degrees of each other right now in Aries. So again, I mentioned it last week. It's strong energy around women. It's around desire. It's around money. We have Venus within four degrees of Uranus, meaning it's chaotic. It can be unexpected. It can mean upheaval in monetary systems. It can mean the drive to have autonomy over your own finances And it is also the drive for sales. And um, especially the combination of Aries and Uranus, um, the desire, and Venus is the desire. Aries is taking action and sales. And then Uranus is inventiveness. So this is a really great time to have uh, new inventive ideas come to the market, um, creating something special and something that nobody's thought about before. And then running running with it, doing something with it. Um, the only negative side of that, although those two planets are in positive aspect to Saturn and Mars, it is helping with Saturn and Mars to get your ducks in a row. So um, 
Okay, so Sun and Taurus, Mercury and Taurus, last two planets that are in this particular wheel. I don't have um, many of the energies of asteroids in this chart right now. So, okay, so Mercury in Taurus. Mercury in Taurus is about, well, Mercury is mental energy, what we think about, how we think about it, what we express to the outside world. It is the connectedness of the electrical side of life, of the mind. And in Taurus, Taurus is Earth, and it is the symbol of the plodding bull out there taking his time to do things. So we have just become very mentally stubborn. We get an idea, we're not going to let it go. We may have other things that are coming into our world, but we're not necessarily letting them in until we are clear on it. So that's the energy of Mercury going into Taurus. Mercury going retrograde in Taurus is going to bring also the energy of money, Taurus money, but pulling back our money. It is about the stock markets. It's about what we think about. We think about money. We think about how our money is working for us and um, the structure of business and what we're going to do about it. So Definitely today and tomorrow, I mean, I sent an email to my dad about the stock market having a moment, so to speak. It's definitely going to affect the stock market, Mercury going retrograde. Um, You know, that being said, I actually want to find out when Uranus goes retrograde because I haven't really been paying as much attention to Uranus because he just went direct not too long ago, so he's not going retrograde until July the end of July. So that's actually a good thing because if he were going retrograde on top of it, that would be even more upheaval for the stock market. Um, So having Mercury go retrograde this week is definitely going to affect what we think about money. We're going to start to get, I mean, not that Taurus, Mercury and Taurus is already going to be watching their money and Definitely, I think the hallmark of Mercury and Taurus is about um, for, not necessarily frugality. I can't even say it. Frugality, like Virgo would have. So Virgo is, you know, monetarily is much more um, cheap. Let's just call it cheap. Uh, Taurus is more of understanding the value of money, understanding what is important, and that quality is worth paying for. So. Um, Definitely keep your eye on your money this well the next few weeks because Taurus going retrograde is going to make it a time where we're much more conscientious of our money and definitely the stock market's gonna feel something going on. Um only I, I would say it's also kind of that that energy with Jupiter about to slow down and go retrograde. So between Now, and well, for definitely the next two weeks, Mercury retrograding in Jupiter, still retrograding in Virgo, and then uh, Pluto retrograde in Capricorn. There is a trine by sign, (laughs) excuse me, a trine by sign. And as Mercury goes retrograde, he's moving backwards towards that degree of Pluto and Jupiter. So let's just see real quick here. I can't believe we're almost in May. That's crazy. So he goes back to 14 degrees. Jupiter will be at 13 and he'll go direct. And then Pluto is at 17. So they're going to be within just four or five degrees of each other in a trine. So they are very strongly talking to each other at this time about expansion, about what we're doing for jobs, for work, for career, And for money. And those are very much the topics that we're going to be discussing over the course of May. So let's see. Is that all? I think for right now that's all. We've got a couple callers. I don't want to make them wait. But I am definitely needing a little snack. So I'm going to take a quick break. And then we're going to be taking our callers. So let's see. We'll see you in just... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm spacey. I gotta get some food. In a, about 
next three minutes. Opolka.sky.com has items for all your summer needs with unique artistic designs from whimsical to serious, fun to photographic. Opolka.sky.com brings fantasy and beauty to your t-shirts, mugs, sig bottles, or clocks. Opolka.sky.com brings the brightly colored art and fantasy world of Shelley Overton to many everyday items such as tote bags and beach bags for those sun-filled days at the beach. You'll find summer shirts and winter warm-ups with bright colors, animal motifs, and flowers that Opolka.sky.com drains up for your enjoyment. Stop by Opolka.sky.com today. Tell them Shelly sent you. Shelly Overton has been practicing astrology for over 25 years and studying it for over 30. As an intuitive astrologer, Shelly is able to give insightful information on celestial influences to your reading. For a personal one-on-one -on -one reading, contact Shelly through astrologerangel.com. Shelly gives personal readings which last over an hour on the phone, or you can request a written astrological analysis. At astrologerangel.com, we can do orary charts, electional charts, and relationship charts. If you are budget-minded, astrologerangel.com can answer a single question, or you can get a 15-plus page computer-generated report. Contact Shelly Overton through astrologerangel.com to get your personalized reading today. Welcome back. My name is Shelley Overton, and you're listening to the Astro Energy Show on Blog Talk Radio. I want to thank you for hanging in there. I do want to give you a little update on the uh, ad that played during the break. The um, num name of the company, Apolka.sky, has been changed to DottedSky.com. So if you did want to look into any of the um, products there, those are some of my artwork that I designed. I 
design different products and t-shirts and things like that. And you can check it out if you want to go to dottedsky.com. And note to self, take down that ad. <laughs> anyway, so welcome back. I am Shelly Overton, and you are listening to the Astro Energy Show. So if you want to contact me uh, for a reading, contact me through astrologerangel.com. And I would love to do a reading for you. So let's take some calls. 336. Hi, 336. How are you today? Hi, Shelly. It's Karen. Hi, Karen. Good to talk to you. Long time no talk. (laughs) It has been. I've had a hard time adjusting to your new time. I know. I'm I'm in my happy place. (laughs) Oh, awesome. So what are you doing? I'm working for a friend who has a compliance business. She deals with uh, GSA compliance with corporations oh, wow. and stuff all over the country. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Yeah, so what can she? Oh, just um, you know, it's been a long time since since we've we've had. Yeah, a yeah. I'm looking for uh, your chart, and I'm trying to figure out. I may put it under your phone number so I'll just go there boy these trucks are just zooming by <laughs> sorry can you hear them can you hear the trucks as they go by no uh-uh. I can't hear okay them. good okay good I, hear, I, I hear, hear them outside and and by the way since I'm at work should the phone ring I will yeah no sure that's fine mute, that's fine you, you can just keep mute talking and I'll listen yeah. to it whatever yeah. exactly that's fine but that sounds good <laughs> otherwise I'm going to cool. stay right here but yeah, so I'm just you know in general, um, what's coming up this summer, mm-hmm. fall, um, and probably sure. mostly work health stuff. Mm-hmm. I've had some weird health stuff going on. That's just <laughs> not know. surprising. Uranus is my, in your house. So. What happened? Oh, Uranus is in my. Okay, I haven't even no. noticed. I threw my body into shock by eating wheat. Oh Easter no! Weekend. Oh my goodness! I mean, I, I won't tell. I won't go into the whole story because. But anyway, I totally threw it into shock, and it oh. actually caused fluid to build up around my heart. That was the worst oh, no. part, and that scared me so much. I'm oh, not touching weed anymore. <laughs> oh my goodness! Now, are you uh, celiac? No, I'm not celiac. I just have um, real sensitivity to wheat, and mm-hmm. I've been off for basically five years but in the last year and a half i've been more or less 100 percent no no wheat wow um you know i still do rice and oats and mm-hmm. stuff but and yeah. seeds and everything but not no wheat mm-hmm. um anyway wow yeah so that, actually, that just got me to looking at the health stuff well definitely um taurus energy which you also have in your house of health you have about 12 degrees of taurus energy in your house of health so um, the body is ruled by Taurus as well, the physicality of the body. Um, it's really in any of the earth signs, but um, actually having the physical body affected is Taurus and also the second house. And since you have that there, definitely there's some connection. It's interesting that um, you said this, oh, you said Easter weekend. When, that was... Yeah just before the sun went in. I think Mercury was going in that weekend. I think Mercury, and Mercury, and that's the other thing. So <laughs> Mercury in, by definition, by my definition as an astrologer is the sign of accidents. So even though you probably purposely ate the food, it can mean things come that were unintended from that action. So Mercury was just in that in your house of health in Taurus at that time, so mm-hmm. I mean Mer- Mercury going retrograde. And this is oh, this is one thing I forgot to tell people too, but I'll tell you in part of the reading after we get through some of this. Um, Vesta is connected to Mercury when it goes retrograde too, and that can mean um, someone who is difficult to be with. You know, a woman, most likely a woman, someone who's being difficult. But anyway. Um, Yeah, Uranus going through House of Health means something is not the way it normally is or something unexpected happens, so that's part of it. And it can also be what you you were saying, kind of unusual things with your health. Um, I don't know if that's Mm -hmm. the only thing, but it means that there's, there's some action taken that 
has unusual consequences. And then Venus, again, Venus rules the body from the second house. She's going through the house of health and the house of service and the house of work, which means that there are probably also some issues going on at work, not only work but career, because you have Jupiter retrograde up in your career house as well, moving back towards your moon in, in Virgo. So, yeah, um, the good news is that Venus and Uranus and Aries in the house of work are right now creating that sense of ownership over what you're doing. So let me see if there's any difficulty. Yeah, Pluto probably is the one foil to what's going on with that because you have a situation. I'm guessing you have a situation that you have more ability to call your own shots. I mean, if you don't, I'd be surprised <laughs> because that's really strong. Yeah, I work, I like work terribly by myself. Oh, do you? Oh, okay. Okay, do you work out of the house? No, I, I come into the office and I basically am just here to answer the phones and greet the mailman. Oh, and okay. Do some type, and do, I do some typing typing for Tommy and, you know, just odds and ends of things that they need doing. They they take, mm-hmm. they work at home on the two days, the Tuesday and Thursday mm-hmm. when I work. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. Yeah, well, definitely there's a strong, I mean, there's multiple, I mean, this is for everybody, but for you specifically, you've got the Virgo energy in career and you've got the Aries energy in work, which is the Virgo house. And Jupiter in Virgo is like, I just want to be alone. So, I mean, (laughs) I know how I feel right now. So if you have Virgo in your chart, which you do, I would tend to say that you're better off working alone right now because it's like that, irritability and lack of patience for people especially Uranus and Aries because Uranus is quick minded and Aries is action so it's like quick action like I, you're just not keeping up with me just get out of my way So, and also um, the Uranus in your house of work because I know you study astrology you could do you take readings I mean I think that you're probably at a point where you could be able to take some readings not really no Wow. I don't know if you've read my blog recently, though, but I, you might want to in oh, the definitely. future because I found a woman in a nearby town, my, actually my hometown, who's very much into the asteroids. So I asked oh, her yeah. Sunday if she would be be interested in guest blogging. Oh, and I mean, she nice. pays more attention to she's she's a young one, and she pays more oh, yeah. attention to asteroids than Lovely. anybody I know. And, wow! Uh, so she's going to guest blog. That's so I'll awesome. be sure to tag you when she, yeah, when she gets yeah, blog definitely. so you'll be able to read it. Would you do that? Because um, definitely it's interesting. Yeah, I will. I know um, Ann Ortley does the asteroids, and she she does them, but she, it's not like she does them to depth. She just she touches on them. Yeah. And it makes yeah. me really interesting. You know, after this long, I've studied astrology for over 30 years, and I'm like, okay, I don't know how much more I can say about that one particular planet. You know, it's like I, I really – thoroughly talked about these planets so much that it's nice to have something else to study in astrology. Right. So, um, so yeah, I, I would love to talk more about the asteroids and if she um, knows anything like, or I don't know if she's just studying or she really already knows a lot, but I would love, definitely uh, like to talk to her and maybe have her on the show. Who knows? So, okay. yeah, but um, continue on. I've got a couple more minutes. Um, so, over the summer, um, for you, now I know you've been you, you've been where you are for a while, correct? And I want to say you moved in the last couple of years. Didn't you say you moved a couple of years ago? Or I moved a year about, ago? Yeah, I moved about seven seven years ago. Okay, well that's that's longer ago than I was thinking. I thought you had just moved recently. Definitely, no. you've got some travel coming up. I I know you know that you you've got that desire to travel, but um, there's the sense of self that has to be expressed through the Sagittarius energy. That's your first house. Um, Saturn going into the second in Sagittarius, of course, having retrograde, you're feeling like you want to do it, but it's not manifesting. I do think that there's going to be a possibility of travel. It doesn't necessarily have to mean you're going to move, but tune when Neptune gets, ah, that's a ways away. I was going to say Neptune's going up on the end degrees of your house and home and family. That'll, that'll kick you into a new space and, you know, a new place. But um, there could be something. Are you thinking of buying a house? Would you consider buying no, it or do you own no. it? Really? I own okay. it. Yeah, I own it outright. Oh, I'm you not do paying, already I don't have a mortgage it. or anything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I don't have awesome. a mortgage or anything. Okay. 
Okay, because I was going to say, you know, buying a house is a possibility too after Mars goes direct. Really, for the summer right now, I'm saying I'm seeing most of what's going on is more work, earning money, um, connecting into people that have like minds. So I know that you have the metaphysical bent and the health side of things, like maybe alternative healing, alternative health, could be a mm-hmm. network of people that you want to connect into with the Virgo in your 11th house. So um, you've got the North Node there, too, right now transiting. So that's an area of expansion that I would encourage you to look into. So whether it's okay. – I mean, I, I honestly didn't memorize what kind of healing modalities you might have. So um, do you do Reiki or do you do massage or do you do um, crystals or crystal Yeah, healing? I'm a Reiki master Stone. teacher. And Are you? I, okay. You know, aromatherapy, a whole plethora of them, a lot of alternative – I grow medicinal herbs and make tinctures and things like that. So. Oh, that's really cool. Okay, so definitely the medicinal herbs I think is a strong hit for doing something. And also infusing, if you make the tinctures, do you infuse them with Reiki? Oh, of course. Awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. awesome. Well, yeah. um, definitely in your chart, I think that you have some opportunities to start selling that more if you haven't already. Definitely I would encourage you to start selling some of those Um the Aries energy in your house of work and, you know, being more autonomous with that and, and bringing in added income because Uranus in the house of work is also multiple income streams. So mm-hmm. um, let's see over the summer. I'm just, I'm just kind of uh, <laughs> visualizing the planets as they're going over the summer. So where they're going to be. Yeah. Jupiter's going to be going through um, for the next year in your house, the 11th house. So that's, you know, mm-hmm. connecting in with networks. So I think that's going to really expand your opportunities over the course of the next year is networking. And then, okay. yeah, and then, of course, uh, Jupiter going into Libra, everyone's going to start pairing up and wanting to balance with other people. So that's a strong time. It's again, It'll be social work or connecting in with other people who need help as well. And Jupiter, I can't understate this, the energy of Jupiter is also – really wanting to do its own thing. It is very healthily into having its boundaries and saying, no, I'm just moving on. You know, I'm going to do this and I'm going to go on to the next thing. So when it goes into Libra, I really think that the energy that's going to bring from Libra is like, okay, I'm going to be in a relationship, but I have to have a voice in the relationship, which Libra tends to be, I will give up me to balance things out. And it's kind of like a continuation right. of the Virgo energy where, oh, let's all just get along and be happy. But Jupiter says, no, I'm not getting fulfilled by that anymore. So, you know, you're going to you're gonna have to face some of those like, well, you know, I'm doing for people, but they're not recognizing that I'm trying to help them. I'm trying to massage the situation, be a diplomat. So that energy is coming in the end of the year for you where it's going to be more about learning how to – get your needs met in relationship through recognizing your needs. So that's coming up for you too. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, are you, are you still one question? Are you still on Skype sure. a bunch or not? Okay. Um, can we hook up and just chat sometime? Yeah, sure. Out. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> you know, I, is your Skype, do you, cause I'm not sure if it would come across with your number or if you have a Skype number, or if it's going to come across with your name, I do get calls that come through, but I give out my my Skype has a phone number attached, and a lot of times I'll give out that phone number as an alternative to my cell when I don't want to give people my cell number. So I right. tend to get a lot of 800 calls on that number, and so if it, if your name's attached to your Skype call, I can know it's you. So that would be a good thing. I'm just kind of clarifying if that's the case. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll, so I'll, I'll I'll touch base with you later. Yeah, no, just give me a call, and if you don't get me on the Skype, just leave a voicemail, and when I go into Skype again, I'll see and I'll call you back. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Thanks, awesome. Shelley. I really it's appreciate good it, good and I'll let you know about the about the asteroid thing too. I'm awesome. not sure when it's, it's going to start, but I will let you know. Okay, great. Well, I'm going to um, check into your blog a little bit more, too, because I think um, I'm definitely at a time where I want to do more connecting to bloggers and stuff. So that would be awesome. And maybe have you as a guest blogger on my website. So that would be awesome. Well, and vice versa, if you want to you blog on sure. I'm, <clears throat> After three and a half years, I'm finally getting some, some notice and some reblogging and stuff. Oh, lovely. Yeah. I'm not the astrologer you are by any means. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I know you're really fantastic, and I've, I've seen some of the stuff you write about, and I know that you, you are really learning your stuff. You really know it. So congratulations. Well, I appreciate and, that. And I appreciate yeah. that. Okay, well, thanks for calling okay. in. Okay, talk to you soon. Have a good one. It's good, good talking to you. Bye-bye. You too. Thanks. Bye, Karen. Okay, we've got 313. Hi, 313. Who is this? Uh, this is Vaughn. How are you doing today? Hey, Vaughn. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Now, why is it not coming up? Oh, there it is, because it's Robert Vaughn. <laughs> Great. Okay. So, what's up for you today? Oh, well, you know, I was listening to the show, and um, I was actually listening online. Mm-hmm. You said there were no calls. That was like a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> It is because you know what I found. I found that one little square of time where nobody listens. <laughs> Unfortunately, well, they, most of my listeners are in uh, archive, and I do get actually more listeners in archive now than I was getting even before when I was at the other time. But um, yeah, it's kind of harder to get the callers. So I don't know. I might have to move it again. I don't want to move it again. I really like the time. So right, oh well. You know, yeah. Well, what can I do for you? Well, you know, you can tell me anything you see, and you know, that's all good. <laughs> I, 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 I'll I listen see. and learn. Yeah, well, I was actually looking at my um, my daily chart. I got a, like seven trines in there. What this what oh this God. program is telling me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you've got a lot going on. I mean, it's like pretty much, you know, like the radioactive symbol where it's the three little (laughs) pie shapes going on. That's your chart right now. You've got a lot of that earth energy. And, you know, even though um, a couple are not in earth, they're all clustered near each other. So you got Mercury Mm -hmm. and then the asteroid Vesta, Sun, Venus, and Uranus all up in your house of marriage and partnership. And then, and yeah, on the other side, kind of filling out one of the... the, um, pie shapes is Pluto, Moon, Saturn, and Mars conjuncting your, well, they're not all on top of your Venus and Mars, but, or excuse me, Neptune and Mars, but you do have them right there. And then the other side of it, the other part of the trine is up there in Leo and Virgo. So yeah, you do have a lot going on and it's kind of like direct hits for you. So um, for those who don't know you, you've got the same birthday I have, almost. Right. Three years younger, but September 10th. So your sun and Pluto are conjunct, and they're within three degrees of each other. And then you're on the late end of the Pluto-Uranus conjunction. So Pluto was at 20, right. and Uranus is at 24. So right. you're not quite in getting the direct hit from Jupiter yet. Of course you will after he goes direct. Yeah. So, but you are getting, you did get it on your son, and now he's back off of your son. He's four degrees away from your son, so you are still kind of feeling it. But what's happening for you is you've got the energy of Jupiter up there, also in your house of networking and connecting to other soul groups. Mm-hmm. Money from career is being affected, and then oh, um, no. because he is so close to your son. Um, again, I said this, I I don't know if I've told you this before. I I know you called what last month, maybe, but, um, yeah, Jupiter's expanding that sense of self. He wants you to really look at the value you have to the world when it comes to healing, uh, being of service, um, you know, knowing how to help people, the volunteer side of things. Um, definitely with sun and Pluto and Venus in that 11th house, you're all about helping and being of service to humanity, you know, so yeah. you're, you're like the social worker in in that respect. Um, our generation, because we have this strong Virgo energy wants yeah. to, I mean, it's like you are able to let go of the ego and really just give yourself over to whatever people need. But that being said, Jupiter on your son is saying you do have to ha- to recognize that you have needs as a human being and right. what Jupiter wants you to do is really pay attention to your needs and really service yourself okay so hmm. that's the lesson of this Jupiter retrograde over your son and then hmm. yeah the trine to Pluto right now is saying, okay, you've got a lot of information that you've gleaned over the years and years and years of studying because our generation definitely loves to learn. The Uranus and Virgo is all about finding things out, getting to the bottom of things. I think it's only equaled by 
the generation that was just born in the late 90s because they have mm-hmm. Uranus and Aquarius. And my son is this. <laughs> it's just like insatiable curiosity. So, right. beca- yeah, because you've mm-hmm. been that person who wants to understand, wants to find out, you have this insatiable curiosity. You've got 50 years, uh, almost 50 years, don't let me age you, uh, almost right. 50 years of wisdom you've gained about the things that interest you. And you're really good with tech, too. Do you do anything with computers and tech? No, not really. I'm, the only thing I'm really doing is writing right now. Well, that's good. Right. Pluto's down there. I'm, I'm really so nice. happy somebody's writing with Pluto in the third house. I've got the book. I, I had a mental block about about it. I think it's one of those things where you know that it's going to be good and you know that, that there's a market for it, so you kind of have like a resistance somehow. I don't know. Do you are you sticking with the writing that you're doing? Well, actually, you know what? When I last called, I was I was asking about writing, and I haven't done my show in a, in a little about a little bit over a month mm-hmm. now. And why is that? I was actually doing. Some, ah, you know what? I'm, I, I was getting to it. It was on the Friday night, so I was doing two nights a week, mm-hmm. and I was you know that stuff. I'm, I'm into that. I'm got this stuff that you know it really interests me, and. I was because of my scheduling and all that kind of stuff. I like I couldn't get that that vibe like I had when I first started my show when I was in Hawaii. Right. <laughs> and uh, I told my people I was like, you know what, I'm I'm, not, I'm gonna discontinue. I, I was calling it the Friday night hangout. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm gonna discontinue this particular form because I don't feel like I don't know. I don't I don't really get that vibe, get that sense that I'm, you know, that I'm. Uh, uh, Connecting or communicating right to you. So what I'm going to do, I think I would be better served by putting mm-hmm. what I want to write in a book. Oh, and as soon as okay. I did that, mm-hmm. as soon as I did that, that door started to open. I'm talking about, when I say oh. as soon as I did that, mm-hmm. the, the way the universe worked, like mm-hmm. woo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Matter of fact, and and the first book that I'm writing is actually a shorter book because so my Sunday show was always about. The uh, law of attraction thing. Uh, I, I, I can, you know, you just give me a subject. I can run that one. It's, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's what I do on that one. Mm-hmm. So I actually joined a, another one of the doors that opened had me. Uh, one of the doors that opened had me uh, doing another type of. I'm actually writing a, 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 a. I'm actually writing a nonfiction book and a and a fiction book. Mm-hmm. You know, and awesome. So, but the fiction, I'm putting, you know, all the stuff I'm, I I want to write about and make it into a story. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then, yeah. but the nonfiction was actually on the based on one of the parts of the uh, law of attraction, and and mm-hmm. it, and it just happened that way, you know. And I'm I'm, mm-hmm. I'm actually I'm acting with it, you know. I got a right. really good community with people, you know. what I'm saying I really mm-hmm. would like to do that. Because I'm all, all all I'm doing right now, I'm not trying to publish paperbacks or anything like that. I'm just straight up doing kindling, you know, and doing oh, books and things of the future. Uh-huh. Yeah, and things are opening up that way. Awesome. You know, so I uh, that's what I really want to do because you know that's the stuff that interests me. You know, job is okay, but you know I'm kind of yeah. tired of doing that kind of stuff. You know. Yeah, and that's kind of becoming really clear right now. I mean, I think it's going to continue to shift, especially. I mean, it's awesome for you because all this energy coming in after Jupiter goes direct is going to hit your sun, your Pluto, Uranus and Mercury without having to go back over it. Like, you know, I have it retrograding over all those planets for me. You're going to have it going direct over all those planets for you, which means that it's this huge shift moving forward between now and October. So, and even uh, September 9th is when it, is when it goes into Libra, Jupiter goes into Libra, and that's going to be right on your Mercury. So you're really going to be tapping in to the vibe of what's going to be happening, especially with people, you know, coupling up. I think um, right now you're in that kind of mental space that's all alone. And when Mm -hmm. Jupiter gets to Libra, you're going to be, it'll be in the 12th house, but it'll be, getting you really prepared for when it goes into the first house, which will be probably around May of next year, May, June. You're going to feel a a kick when Jupiter goes into the first, and then it'll be like, whoa, you know, I really need to find a partner, and you're going to 
I mean, I, unless you're already in a relationship. I apologize if you are. I, I didn't think you no, were. No. Yeah. So I think definitely it's on its way. I mean, I think everybody is going to really feel Jupiter and Libra by going, man, this is intense energy. You know, this is, I need to balance things. And, and it's going to be because Jupiter, again, is about getting your needs met in a relationship. Right. You're going to start really, I mean, you might even have a short-term relationship. I'm sorry, I've got this British lady yelling in my ear right now. Like, mm-hmm. I know. Um, the, the show's over for people listening live, but um, they can hear it in archive. So I'll just say goodbye to my listeners who are live and uh, listen in archive. But right. anyway, yeah, the, the Jupiter going into the 12th house, it's about subliminal subconscious. And then when he gets into the first house, it's going to be like, bam, you know, you're going to be much more connected to relationships where you'll say, no, I can't just give everything and not get my needs met. And then you'll, you'll really resonate to a relationship that meets those needs, especially um, talking to you now with Venus conjunct Uranus and Aries in your house of marriage. It's like, no, I've got to have my sense of self-expression in this relationship. So it's no longer, I'll give up me so that we can keep the relationship going, but it'll be about, right. you know, I, I'm, I'm going to be with someone who's more conducive to helping me with my career and I can help her with hers or, you know, they're going to be the person that matches you because you're vibrating differently. You're not willing to put up with that anymore. So, yeah. What was that? <laughs> what did you say? That's, exact, that's exactly why I like being by myself now, though. Yeah, but that Jupiter, yeah. that Sun in Virgo, you know, all the other planets that are Virgo are like, man, I just don't have any energy to give to anybody. I was thinking that myself. I'm like, I don't have any energy to nurture people right now. I'm just so tapped out. So that's really good. You know, like you're recognizing that you don't always, always, always have to give it away. Don't always give yourself away, you know, take time to rejuvenate. So you're in rejuvenation cycle right now. And even though you're going to want a relationship, you're going to start really connecting into what it is that's going to make you happy in a relationship after Jupiter goes into Libra because it's in the 12th and all the subliminal stuff, the things that you may not have faced as strongly. I mean, you did face them when Saturn was in Libra about three years ago, three and four years ago, Saturn was in Libra then. And then that's when it was like, oh, you know, I'm not happy. I don't know if you're in a relationship then, but then you're like, oh, no, this isn't working for me. So, um, you know, that that energy shifted then. And Jupiter is going to expand and help you really understand more of your motivations around relationships and your mindset. And you definitely need somebody who is mental. You like the un, the ability to to get to the bottom of things and to like reason through things and um, understand things in a logical way. Like I'm very logical too, because I have four planets in Virgo, but you know, I have Saturn in Pisces and I have Neptune in Pisces right now transiting. So it's like, I've really opened up to that intuitive side of my nature. You have the intuitive side as well, but you have Virgo and Libra in that house. So, you know, the intuitive side is channeled through um, thought as opposed to emotion. So, you know, that's going to get really strong with Jupiter going through your 12th. So, yeah. Sweet. Is there any, any other specific question you wanted before I end the show? Yeah. Um, my money situation. What's going on with that? <laughs> well, bit, your I, money situation <laughs> is difficult right now because Saturn and no Mars doubt. are in Sag. <laughs> retrograde. No yeah. Well, you've got Mars in Sag, and you've got Moon in Sag in your natal chart, and then you have Saturn and Mars going through your money house retrograde as of last weekend, and right. also um, Mars is going to hit your Neptune. So really, the lessons of that are: are you are you expressing yourself to other people the way you need to to get your needs met? Um, it's a very happy-go-lucky energy. You tend, like, again, you tend to go and you know, like, oh, I'm not going to worry about it, because of other planetary energies, specifically the ruling planet of Jupiter, uh, Jupiter ruling Sagittarius retrograde. That's going to help you on May 9th. That really will help you. But Mars and Saturn are still having you learn lessons, and really, the lesson is pay more attention to the details. And if you want the money, I mean, Jupiter's in your house of money from career. It's there. 
It's retrograde right now until May 9th, but when it goes direct, the retrograde Sagittarius planet transits and your natal ones are answering to that planet. So once it goes direct, it's saying you have to have a major change happening when Jupiter gets on your Pluto. That's major change around money and career. It's really what it is, is you have to value what you do and then the universe will value you and reward you. That's it's that simple. It's one for one. There's there's no like secret formula. It's like when you value yourself and all of the amazing information and like again, it's all that Virgo energy that you've been able to pull out understanding. Um, you know, you're getting the book written. You're a te- you're a teacher. I am. You've got sun in Virgo and you've got Pluto and Uranus in Virgo, you're here to teach people different ways of looking at health, different ways of looking at healing. So alternative health and healing modalities, you're here to help humanity as a whole, as opposed to one-on-one, you you know, all that energy with the exception of Uranus in your 12th, it's the Uranus in the 12th is a sage. You're basically a channeler as well. You channel information and understanding that you need to get out. That's what Pluto going through your third house is trying to get it out. It just went retrograde. So you're going back over what you've written. You're reworking. You may end up reworking more of it. And Pluto, I'll tell you when he goes direct. And that's when it'll, well, actually, uh, Mars going direct is going to be, I mean, June, June and July, um, June, the end of June is when Mars goes direct, and then Saturn goes direct in July, or excuse me, in August. But Mars going direct will be more helpful, especially after the end of July. So all of July he's direct, but he's still up to he went up to 23 degrees, which is the very beginning. It's only within two degrees of your beginning of money house. So he's literally right up there butted up next to your Neptune and it's like wait a minute in Neptune in Scorpio is about your value okay it's about how you value yourself and how others value you and it's really how you see yourself as a value to others so when Mars goes direct which is the end of June that's going to really help your finances so I know from now until June it's going to be like what but Jupiter going direct in May will help as well Jupiter going direct is going to help you get money in a career situation so there will be um, maybe a possibility for a shift with your career that will really be the building blocks for when Saturn and Mars get going forward because Saturn and Mars direct late summer that's like okay now we're on to the next career that we're on to the next thing and it's and, and that could be your book it's just that that's the thing that feeds your soul. It's in Sagittarius. It's your house of money. And for you to make money, you have to feel freedom. You have to feel spiritually free. And and it's really hard because – but you are very fortunate. Sagittarius is the most fortunate sign of the zodiac because Jupiter is expansive. It brings fortune. So um, I would say probably the end of June is going to be like do or die for you, like – now is the time to make my dreams happen because of that connection of Mars to to your Neptune. Okay? Right. Yes, man. I wish I had the time to tell you what happened with my money, though. That was a funny story, actually. Well, and you need to the call in it, early. Oh, go ahead. No, nah, I'm just I was saying, saying you know, the way it happened. You uh-huh. know, it, 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 it was tough, but it wasn't – I understood it because I didn't know exactly what was going on. But the way it uh-huh. happened, you know what I'm saying – yeah. The way it happened, it was like, oh man, it, you you kidding me right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the way it happened, and I knew, I didn't even really get upset. Wow. Once I yeah. found out what was going on, I was like, okay, see. Yeah. But yeah. At that I've had time that it happened. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> yeah. I've done that. I'm like, crap. I'm not even going to challenge it because I know that was just my stupidity. <laughs> Right. Sometimes, well, I don't know about you. I mean, I, I just saying my, for myself. Sometimes I'm like, man, and I knew better. Why did I do that? <laughs> exactly. Like, well, I, I, my thoughts are with you. I totally get, you know, what you're going through right now. You've got your son at 17. My son's at 17. I totally get what it's like. Right. It's, it's intense. And I mean, I just a little anecdote. I live on a farm and I rent the house on the farm I live on and I had 12 cows in the back four acres when I moved in I live on five acres and the front 
is the where the house the house I live in is on the front acre, and I had a dozen cows, and little by little they took them away and sold them off because they were not wanting to have to feed them and maintain them because they're just dairy cows. So they sold them off, and today they took the last three, and I it broke my heart. And I moved here, and I had all these wonderful animals and these cows, and I felt like I was on a farm, and now they took away all the cows. And so I get it. You know, this week is probably a little bit emotionally difficult when it comes to finances and comes to the material goods. You know, it's going to be, you know, I just want it to go well. For you, you've got Mercury and Taurus right in joint finances, and it's going to retrograde and go back over Vesta. And that has to do with some type of partnership that somebody's going to be maybe a little bit more difficult. I don't know if your parents still connect to you or you have any financial, you know, connection with them somehow. Could also mean, you know, your mom or your dad is giving you a hard time about money or something like that. So know that it's it's only temporary we got three right. weeks three short weeks of mercury retrograde in taurus and then when mercury goes direct and pardon me i can do that three yeah weeks. and then yeah and then sun will be in gemini and mercury will go direct and he'll get back into gemini and gemini is very charismatic and um and has multiple things going on you'll have multiple income sources so yeah, but partnering. Partnering is going to be on the horizon for you, too. So that's going to be okay. where you'll connect. And so just finding the network. That's, I mean, Jupiter's in your house and networking. So it's finding your soul group. Okay? Mm-hmm. That's what's up. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm listening. I'm normally I'm listening online, but, you know, I couldn't have, you know, I couldn't have the show like this and nobody called in. I was like, let me go and do that then. Yeah, well, you know, I definitely have to beef up my advertising. I haven't um, gotten it out as quickly, so I need to do that. But I do have wonderful listeners. You know, I still have great listeners after the fact. You know, my archive listeners are really yeah, supportive and consistent. So, so that's awesome. But, uh, yeah, I, right. I like live calls. i got to get people on here. And I do want to ha- start having um, – like guests on too. I think that, you know, that's, I think it's more natural. I I feel like I sound more natural when I have guests and people to talk to. So I really enjoy interacting with people. So I'm going to do more of that. But um, yeah, I'm going through the same thing. It's like renovation time right now. The next two months is all about renovation. So just go and right. you know find out what works, what doesn't get rid of what doesn't go with what does and start moving on, you know, right. So that's pretty much it. So. All right. Thank yep. you very much, Miss Shelley. You're welcome. Thanks for the call. It's good talking to you again. Thanks for the support. Always a pleasure. Okay. Yes, Take care. Bye. Bye bye. All right. That's the end of the show. And thank you for sticking with me. We'll talk to you next week. Don't forget to call in. Bye. Stopping by Astro Energy this week. If you would like to get a hold of Shelly Overton, you can get her at astrologerangel.com, on Facebook at Astro Energy or Astrologer Angel. The music was provided by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com with additional music by Ironwood Rain. Check them out on the net at ironwoodrain.com.